Hi guys, Simon here. So this is part three of Michael and Kung story. Again, for you guys coming in watching this, if you're not into the love stories, off you go. And for you guys that are getting hooked on this story, I'd like to take this moment to blame one of our subscribers, Alan, I won't say his surname, Alan has been asking me for these sort of stories and longer stories. So Alan, it's your fault. And yes, I'm gonna tease you guys rotten, drag this one out. Hmm, your fault, Alan. We left the story. Michael and Kung are in Bangkok, they've been shopping. And Kung had suggested they get a hotel for the evening, for the night. And they arrived in Chinatown by taxi after a bit of shopping. I must point out the lunch they had, Michael paid for. Kung didn't even offer to pay for the lunch, but Michael jumped in anyway. But the clothes she bought earlier, she paid for, didn't give Michael a chance. So they've arrived at the hotel, and as I've mentioned, Michael is petrified at this point. Kung step, two steps in front of him, heading towards the reception. It's a three star, four star hotel. Michael's already made the mistake, mistake on one of the, the earlier lunch meetings of offering her money to take her back to his condo. At that point, she nearly shot him, well, she did shoot him down. And after a lot of begging and groveling, he saved the relationship, moving on. So this is Kung, who is 42 years old, Michael 65, for those of you who haven't seen the previous ones. She's slim. Five foot eight, not a lady boy, very attractive, very long dark hair down to the bottom of her back, the hair goes slim. And Michael's fallen madly in love with her. He's they haven't had any physical contact apart from one kiss on the cheek from Kung to Michael. So they're approaching the reception desk. He is, hasn't got a fog yet. If she orders, if she goes first and orders one room, two rooms, he's gonna pay. She could order the penthouse suite and he's gonna pay. He doesn't care, he doesn't want to make that first move and drop himself in it. But he's no idea what she's gonna say. They get to the desk and he's sort of hanging back a little bit. And Kung said to the uh, a guy at the reception. Um, we'd like a room for a room for the night. What have you got? Um, and her English is impeccable, as I mentioned before. And she's speaking in English to a Thai guy. <laughs> okay, don't know why. But she's speaking in English, which is good for Michael. <laughs> if she spoke in Thai, he still wouldn't know what she was ordering. And the guys turned around and said, we have normal uh, standard rooms for 1,500 baht for a night. We have junior suites at 3,000 baht. And then we've got more exclusive rooms if that's what you prefer. And Kung, with not even looking at Michael, not even slightest, just straight to the guy. We'll take a junior suite, please. And Michael is mixed emotions. Oh my God, they've got one room. Kung's just ordered a junior suite, which is, for instance, for, for in the Bangkok, the junior suite is a, a large room. It's usually got a seating lounge area, a desk for the business guy with internet, usually a larger bathroom, maybe a jacuzzi, um, and usually quite well, the decor is rather nice usually. 3,000 baht a night, that's a lot of money, especially years ago. So the guy said, uh, 3,000 baht, and Kung said, we'll have the junior suite. And he said, uh, can I take a credit card, please, for the room payment uh, as a deposit? And at this point, Kung has gone with her hand, looking down to her handbag, and going to put her hand in the handbag. Michael immediately has jumped in cards straight out of his pocket there you go let me sort this come on the desk 
Now that moment stuck in Michael's head forever because Kum could have been going in her handbag for a piece of chewing gum <laughs> but he assumed immediately that she was going for a card to make payment. I mean she's indicated she's got some money and she's looking for a business. This this woman has gone up in his estimation even more. He can't believe. But she, he didn't want a business in Thailand. He wanted to retire and just chill out. Here he is, left his two friends in Pater, he's in Bangkok, about to check into a hotel that he's paid for with a beautiful woman that he's not touched in any way whatsoever. It's a single room, it's a, a room, they're not going to be a big double bed, it's for the night. He's now gone feelings to being petrified. Um, all sorts of mixed emotions going through his head. Anyway, the guys give him his credit card back. Here's the room key, explained how to get to it. And Kung has taken his hand, first time she's held his hand, dragging him off towards the lift. Well, not dragged him off, but led him off. Up they go to the room. Um, what do you think? How would you be feeling if you were him in this situation right now? He's petrified, absolutely petrified. Got to the door, comes open the door, in they go. He's closed the door behind, they've got their little bags. And as usual, you look around and they've both walked around. It's a lovely, large suite. Windows are overlooking the main street in Chinatown. Great views, it's about the fourth floor. You can just about see over the other uh, buildings, the roofs, and they're in the room. Kung has now, at this point, put her bag on the bed. So uh, Michael's put his there, um, and he's he's petrified. He just doesn't know what to do. He's in unknown territory. You know, if he makes the wrong move now, it'll all be over and... Oh, God. So, Kung has turned around there and then to Michael and said, um, let's take a shower. And I said, that was, let's, with an S on the end, let's take a shower. <sighs> Michael's mouth has fallen open, he's drooling, he's like, oh my god, he's petrified. He's... Anyway, we'll cut this a little bit shorter. She's led him into the shower, they've had a shower. <sighs> Horizontal aerobics got changed and they're heading off for an evening meal. Michael didn't perform well in his head, but is gobsmacked, is shocked, is even more in love. Now I must point out at this at this moment, um, uh, Michael, I keep calling it Colin. Michael uh, uh, said to me um, uh, recently that that moment was the turning point in their relationship. But he then went on to tell me that uh, when Kung had no clothes on, it was if, she was very slim and tall, but it was if she had, uh, her skin was one size too big for her body. Very droopy. And he kept telling me this, so I'm gonna put that in your head, that picture. You work it out. He's, that's stuck in his head. Anyway, so they've gone through the process, first contact, like first contact with the alien, and they've got dressed and they're heading off out for a, a Chinese restaurant. And Kung's taking them to uh, 
a nice little restaurant at the back street that she's been to before and she's ordered shark fin which is I don't know some Chinese delicacy and for uh, medicinal purposes people believe all sorts of things with these shark fins anyway Michael's ordered some food and uh, they've had a lovely meal then Kung said let's have a little walk around there's some nice um, shopping area here and up they go walking around Chinatown she's picked a couple of things out uh, he said she actually bought some um, sexy lingerie and he offered to pay but she wouldn't let him Sexy lingerie, Chinatown. Anyway, after the shopping, back to the hotel. Now, remember, Michael's 65 years old. He's um, he's not the most athletic person in the world, even though he's quite fit. He's uh, um, he's Kung's uh, started again with him on the aerobics, but he's not really got the energy power to perform he has said to me that um kung realized this and then turned it into a most romantic sensual evening and it was incredible um and by the next morning he had performed a bit and very happy with his he, he was very happy in himself with his performance <laughs> they spent the night together they've broken the ice uh, Michael says to me that at this point he was very comfortable with Kung's companionship and he was besotted he, he had totally lost his mind he, he just was so confused that he he'd was, he'd come to retire, he didn't want a business, he didn't want a, a, a powerful woman coming into his life and taking over. But he loved it. He was absolutely enthralled. He just didn't know that he could find love again. Um, and at no point did Kung come across uh, disgenuine in any way. She was just the full package in his eyes she was perfect she was you know why hadn't he met her sort of 30 40 years ago he couldn't believe such a beautiful woman existed and he kept mentioning the wrinkly body though <laughs> so yeah yeah sticks in my mind that does anyway come morning when dan had breakfast checked out um and Kung said that she'd like to go back to Patea. She's uh, got some stuff to do in that day. And um, that maybe they could, and she's suggested, an evening meal that evening in Patea. They got in a taxi back to Patea. And he's, they, she's got out again on Beach Road. She's not taken her to wherever she's living. They've dropped to Beach Road. And she said, drop me here and then you obviously go back to the condo and we'll meet tonight at about uh, six. We'll go somewhere for a meal. He's like, yep, yeah, okay. And he's just like a, he's like a dog being pulled along on a lead. He's, he's totally, you know, under the, under the thumb. So dropped her off beach road, headed off back to his condo, paid the taxi, gone in, had a shower, changed. He's in a rush. He's got to go and find his two friends and tell them his conquest. And he shoots down to the local place that uh, he finds them at lunchtime and they're there. And they're, what's going on? Where have you been? What's happened? We were worried. And he's told them the whole story. And they're, wow, can't believe it, you know. Well, okay, yeah. And they're just shocked at his, the, the way he is he's, he's admitted everything to them and told them every detail and the wrinkly body and they're like mm, okay this is special wow what are you gonna do and he's i don't know an evening meal tonight but i don't know whether she want to come back to my condo or, or i don't know he's no idea he's hooked 
well and truly. So, it'll move forward a little bit. Met up in the evening, they've had a meal. And Kung said to him, thanks for the meal. I'm going to go home now. Um, I'm busy tomorrow. I've got some uh, business I want to take care of. Can we meet the next morning for breakfast? 10 o'clock early breakfast. Beach Road will meet and we'll go for breakfast. And again, Michael's like, uh, he's shocked again. She's, he thought maybe she'll we'll go back to the condo and and start a relationship that way. But no, 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 no. Kung's got him there. Meal, he's paid for it. She kissed him on the cheek. Bye bye, gone. And he's down near Walking Street and he's. <laughs> just, just, he can't get his head round it. She is bouncing him up and down like a yo yo, you know, just like a fishing rod. She's reeling him in, then pushing him back a bit, reeling him in, and just teasing him. Such a wonderful woman. Amazing. So they've arranged for breakfast. Not tomorrow, the day after. So he's got a whole day on his own again, thinking about it. Hmm. Doesn't know. He's, he's just so confused, so in love. He's, he, he's just totally in her hands. She's now running the show. If she said to him, let's jump on an aeroplane and go to Bali for a week, he'd be, okay, and I'll pay for it. Or, you know, let's go wandering around somewhere. Yeah, okay. So he spends the next day um, trying to think about life and what's happened. And he's trying to get his head straight. He's trying to, like, I've got to make decisions here. This is not how I wanted my life to go here in Thailand. But I'm falling in love with a woman. What do I do? What on earth? He's trying to think of everything. Do his, you know, can he take control of it? Can he bring it back? Can he get some sense of what's going to go on in the future? Does he want to keep seeing her? Does he bail out right now? He's, he's just, nah, his brain is frazzled. He hasn't got the foggiest. He can't make a decision. She's got him well and truly hooked. Day goes by. He doesn't see his friends. He does spend the whole day. And he's down on the beach in Jomtien. He can't make his mind up. Next morning comes. He's like a rabbit. Straight down to meet Kung. He's there early again on the beach. Along she comes. Kiss on the cheek. Let's go for breakfast. Um, and she says a place in Third Road. Somewhere nice that she likes. Which well, Thai and Western. So they jump in a song tell. Good wander around. I mean, they've got up there. And they're eating breakfast. At this point, Kung says to Michael, I think you're really nice Michael and I'm getting feelings towards you that I've not had before with anyone it's very strange and I'm a little bit scared I don't want to hurt you and I don't want to get hurt and she said do you think we should stop seeing each other at this point or should we maybe move forward together? She says, I'm really not sure what to do. And Michael's, oh my God. She's putting the ball in his court. And she's put him on the spot. Before he can say anything, she then says, if we move forward together, she says, I want to get a business. I would like a guest house and I'd like a business and I could see it working well with the pair of us. Um, tomorrow I want to go to Koh Samui because this is the place I've decided I want to get my or get a business. I've never been before but I want to go and spend some time there and look around. And she said I planned tomorrow for the day to go. 
what do you think? What do you think about us? Should we finish here? Should we stick together? Hmm. And that's where I'm going to leave it today. Told you I was going to tease you. Your fault, Alan. I'll catch you on the next part. Bye for now.